remember that you always do a plan on your undressing for the week and ensure that before you sleep, you have made a decision as the clothes you wear the following day and ensure that it is well kept. It is stressing to just wake up in the morning only to discover that there is a cloth missing or that the one you intended to wear is dirty. You also need to ensure that your personal cleanliness is not ignored. This is because as a student, you should always remember that cleanliness is next to godliness. Therefore, always ensure that you have set aside some time for the purposes of doing your personal cleanliness. This includes washing your clothes, cleaning your room, as well as taking a bath. Remember that you spend more than six hours in bed while sleeping, and therefore, your bed should not only be clean, but should also be well spread or made. In addition, the cleanliness of your shoes should also come in handy. However, just as it was for the timetabling, ensure that cleaning is also timetabled so that you don't skip this task any day and then you end up wearing dirty clothes. In addition, this organization should also be in the way you keep your books and other materials. This includes even the way that you organize your exercise books and the notes therein. Always ensure that you always use the correct book for the right subject and ensure that the notes inside are well organized and easy to retrieve the content, which includes numbering your pages, writing dates, etc. You should also ensure that in every exercise book, you have a section that indicates the assignments and the deadlines given so that you can be ensuring that you do these assignments before the date set for submission. In fact, it's advisable to have a separate notebook for recording assignments given and their submission dates. Then, using those notes and those dates, you also set for yourself some private lessons used for assignments. Always remember that doing an assignment is part of your revision and therefore it is undivisible that you do assignments on the same day they are given out. But if that is not possible, you schedule them at least two days. Always carry the assignment book with you in every lesson in readiness for any assignment that the teacher may give you. However, if you don't have such an exercise book, you can still be using a section of each subject's exercise book for assignment purpose, but remember to be checking each exercise book every day for any assignments given so that you don't forget any one of them. In addition, always remember to do assignments and fund them on time without a fail. If you realize that due to one reason or another, you might not be able to meet the set deadlines or that you might miss a lesson when an assignment will be submitted, or that you might miss a lesson for an exam, always make it your responsibility to inform your teacher about it way in advance. This is because if you wait until the lesson or assignment or exam is passed, the teacher might never be sent to you. Therefore, avoid the habit of waiting to be asked why you never submitted an assignment or why you did not take a cut or an exam, but make it a habit to be seeking for an apology or a permit in advance in case you feel that something might make you fail to meet the set deadlines and timelines. However, if an emergent issue arises at exactly when you are about to sit for an exam or submit an assignment, you can liaise with the teacher immediately or with the class rep or prefect and pass the apology through him or her. Otherwise, you can still submit your apology letter, but don't wait to be followed by the teacher and then you start apologizing. It is also important to always ensure that your handwriting is legible for everyone to read. This is because when you write assessments and hand them in to your teacher or any other person to mark, you will not be there to explain what you have written. It is therefore important 
that you train yourself on how to write legible characters that can be read by anybody easily. Remember that even if your teacher is used to your handwriting, he or she may not be the person to mark your national or final examinations. It is therefore important that any time you make some notes, always ask your teacher or your friend or anybody to read it so that you can know whether your handwriting is okay or not. If you find that they are struggling to read what you have written, that is a clear sign that, what you are, that your handwriting is not clear. It is therefore important to ensure that you work towards improving your handwriting. After all, there is no need for you to work very hard and smart towards passing in your academics only for you to fail just because the examiners have become unable to read your work. In addition, any time that you write some material that is to be read by someone else, including an exam, always go through what you have written before you hand it in so that you can be able to make sure that everything you have written is clear and legible and make corrections when necessary. In addition, once a timetable for examinations is released, always prepare another personal timetable for revising for the exams so that you can be sure that you have revised adequately for examinations as scheduled. It is also important to ensure that you have several exercise books for making notes for every subject or have a single voluminous exercise book that can accommodate several units or subjects. It is then important that you label each of the exercise books or pages of the single book to clearly indicate the subject and its page. Also, it's going to always ensure that you have an exercise book for creating summaries from your notes written in your own ones or reading your notes, or you can still have a section of each subject's exercise book being set aside for summarized notes. If you can be making summarized notes for each subject continuously and consistently as you revise, you don't need to read your class notes or other textbooks when the examination timetable is out. But what you just need to do is to go through your summarized notes for revision. It is also important that as a scholar, you always work with a pocket, notebook, and a pen. These two are very important for jotting your ideas because they can come anytime. In fact, you might even find that you have gotten a revelation about a solution to something that you could not be able to remember or a new idea has come altogether. If you don't have a pen and someone to note that idea once it comes, it might even disappear and you may never remember it again. In fact, students and scholars normally get great ideas who are not busy thinking about their studies. That's why, as a student, you should never work without a pen and a notebook. In fact, it's without a pen and a notebook in which you are expected to note down any announcements made, if possible, assignments given and other activities that you need to attend to. It's a good idea to have your personal timetable and other class timetables posted in this notebook so that you can always check for what you are required to do when. This includes this for submitting assignments and carrying out other activities that have deadlines. In fact, as part of what you can be carrying around with you is to draft some short notes for your aspects or for aspects that you want to always remind yourself about so that you don't forget. These draft and short notes can either be included in your pocket notebook or you can also be carrying them in other small or short forms. Therefore, if for example you are reading or the teacher was teaching something that became hard for you to grasp, you cannot search in your pocket notebook and have a glimpse of it once in a while, even while away from your revision room, the class, or the school. This can be a very nice way of revising as you interact with the nature, or with nature and with others. It is also beneficial for you as part of the other students in the class to always organize yourselves as groups or even as a whole class in a way that you can be holding common revisions, especially when your subject teacher is absent. In this case, those students that are very good in certain subject areas can be acting as peer teachers, and then they can be taking their classmates through a lesson, just like a teacher, whereby the students can agree 
on the lesson for discussion, and then the peer teacher can lead the class. Then, if any questions emanate from this lesson that no student is able to answer correctly, such a question can be found to the subject teacher for a solution. Therefore, as a good student, you should always avoid complaining that a teacher is missing lessons, and then you just relax and waste the lesson by making notes or noise, loitering outside the class, going home and doing other such unnecessary activities. But you should always take an advantage of such a lesson to assist each other as a class. Always remember that the teamwork whose core mandate is to execute an academic task is very beneficial to each individual learner. Therefore, instead of complaining about the missed lesson, have an academic activity to perform either as a class or as an individual in a lesson in which the teacher has failed to come to class. Therefore, anytime a subject teacher fails to appear for a lesson, you can either take advantage of that lesson and carry out personal activities or personal studies or do an assignment, or you can even agree as a class to have peer teaching and then later, the class representative can inform the management about the absence of the subject teacher in the lesson. Pillar number 19. Pillar number 19 is individualizing academic responsibility. Individualizing academic responsibility. As a student, always remember that your key objective for being in school is to acquire the relevant knowledge and skills that can enable you to graduate successfully from your current studies and either join a higher academic level or exit the job market as a competent professional. Therefore, your academic goals and activities should override all other goals and activities. This is because your key focus should be to excel in your academics. It is therefore important to always remember that it's not your teacher that will do the examination for you, neither is your parent or your classmates. Therefore, you should make it your responsibility to make reading a hobby. After all, it's academic work that has brought you to school. Therefore, in your daily schedule or timetable, give the highest priority to your academics. Ensure that you have a clear understanding of which subjects you are taking, the teachers taking you through each subject, each teacher's contact, and the venue in which each subject will be taught from. This means that once you attend your very first lesson, request the teacher to provide you with the subject's course outline. Then once you have this course outline and the class timetable, you should be able to make a good personal timetable for yourself and also a copy, or also copy each subject's course outline within each subject's exercise book. Then, Immediately after the first page in your exercise book that contains your personal timetable and the subject's timetable, the next item that you should include in it and that should follow is the subject's course outline. Therefore, with the guidance of the timetable, you will always be able to know when and where a subject will be taught and the outline will always indicate the topic or subtopic or the lesson title that the teacher has covered and that he or she will be covering. So, once you have this course outline, you should embark immediately on your studies because this guideline will enable you to research or read ahead yourself without waiting for the teacher. In fact, as part of your study, you should always learn to research for your own notes under the guidance of the course outline and make your own notes. This is very good because it not only prepares you for an upcoming lesson, but it also helps you cover your subject even without waiting for the teacher. Remember that the course outline for the subject is its roadmap. Therefore, once your teacher has provided you with the subject's course outline, make it your individual responsibility to cover the syllabus and don't just rely on your teacher to provide you with lesson notes. If you can also be able to make your own personal notes before a teacher covers that topic in class, you not only enjoy the lesson, but the teacher will just be taking you through revision during the class. So, with a course outline, you are free to start the learning race. Therefore, even if your teacher does not cover the course outline in class, you should be able to cover it yourself. So, don't be a student that always complains that the teacher has not taught, that the teacher is missing classes, etc. 
Because by doing so, you will just be creating a negative attitude towards the subject. Therefore, instead of complaining, utilize that time when the teacher has not attended the lesson to read ahead, revise on what has been covered, and make your individual notes. In addition, you should always avoid complaining that the teacher is not giving you notes. In fact, it would be good for your teacher not to provide you with his or her own notes because those are teacher's notes written in a language that he or she is the only one that understands and such notes may be difficult for you to comprehend because they are not your notes. Therefore, you should be reading and making your own notes because those will be easier for you to understand and remember than trying to read another person's notes who is your teacher. In addition, you should stop complaining that your institution or that your subject lacks textbooks or that your institution's library is not adequately stocked with the books that you require. This is because the contents in hard copy physical books get outdated very fast. Therefore, the best library and the best source of current materials is the internet. So what the institution should provide you with is an internet connectivity and then the school or each teacher can train you on how to search for your own notes from the internet. However, if the institution cannot be able to provide you with the internet connectivity, you can make some little sacrifice and be buying some data bundles for yourself, and then you can make use of your personal smartphone, laptop, or any type of computer to access the internet. Always remember that whatever you are doing is for your own good, and there's no need to blame others on matters pertaining to your academics. Therefore, with a course outline and internet connectivity, you have all what it takes to succeed. So, when a teacher comes to class, he or she should just come to guide you in the subject, but not to dictate for you an already made set of personal notes. Otherwise, by doing so, that teacher will be blocking your scope of knowledge acquisition and your level of understanding of the subject content will be low. It is therefore important that you take your own initiative to read for yourself and make notes for yourself, because as you make those notes, you'll be devising already, and that will improve your level of knowledge acquisition than you would have gained if you are provided for with notes. In addition, it is important to ensure that you participate in some of the co-curricular activities available in your current institution, because they will not only add value to your academics, but it will also help you to either discover or enhance your hobbies and the talents. However, don't spend most of your time in co-curricular activities at the expense of your academics. This is because, whereas it is good to participate in school co-curricular activities, you should remember that you have joined your current institution so as to pursue your academics and graduate successfully with excellent performance. Therefore, you should always choose your co-curricular activities carefully and wisely so that you don't end up spending all your time in co-curricular activities at the expense of your academics. Always remember that participating in a physical exercise or engaging in a vigorous psychomotor activity helps your body to relax, release tension and stress, help you to be physically fit, as well as helping you to improve in your level of concentration in class or during your personal studies. It is therefore advisable that you participate in a co-curricular activity of your choice, either on daily basis or on specific days of the week, and especially after classes, or at times when you feel that your level of concentration during your private studies is low. It is important also to ensure that you schedule your co-curricular activities in your timetable, especially after classes, or at times when you feel that you have become tired after reading for long. This is because, if you are not careful, you might find out that your co-curricular activities have overridden your academics, which should not be the case, unless your main objective for joining this institution was to excel in a certain co-curricular activity and not academics. It is okay to excel in both academics and in co-curricular activities, but the chances of not excelling in both of them is very high because multitasking as a student is bound to be detrimental to your academics, and that's why multitasking is not normally and divisible. Pillar number 20. Pillar number 20 is appreciating your achievements. Appreciating your achievements. As a student, always remember 
that there is no human being that is perfect, and therefore there are times to fail and times to succeed. Therefore, as long as you have done your level best in any activity as a student, never think negatively about yourself, but always look at the positive side of what you did. Always remind yourself that the failing and the passing are always part of life. As long as one has done his or her level best, and it's not a guarantee that one must always excel in everything that he or she does. Always remember that you are not perfect and that you can make a mistake and therefore always accept your mistake or your weaknesses and apologize as well as working towards improving yourself. In addition, Never fear to ask a question or clarification when not sure of what to do or how to do it. Always learn from your mistakes and work towards avoiding them in the future. So, instead of blaming yourself or feeling pity or becoming harsh on yourself, just accept your mistakes, learn from them, and move on. Never ever allow negative thoughts to rule over your mind. Remember, that you are a student and therefore as you go through your academic journey failing in something is just a part of learning you should always be happy and proud of your achievements as long as you have carried out a task to the best of your knowledge never hate yourself or despise yourself because of failing to attain a certain target but always use the resource you have gotten to help you assess where you, have, you might have gone wrong if you find out that there is something that you are failed to do, then learn from your past action to help you improve your future in the subject. That is, rectify what you did not do right and do it right so that you can improve in your studies. Remember that academic journey is a process and you progress from one level to the next until you complete your studies. Therefore, it's better to begin your studies with attaining a lesser grade or a low score and then you continuously improve it as time passes so that by the time you are completing your course or taking the final examination, you will have done your very best. Then to commence with a very high score and then your performance continuously deteriorate until you graduate with a very low grade or fail to graduate altogether. However, if you consistently do your best in a subject or a course and you seek for guidance from the subject teacher as well as from the guidance and the counseling staff, and then you realize that your grade is not becoming as best as you would have expected, just appreciate your performance and don't regret about it because that's the best you could have done. Therefore, if for sure you have worked very hard and smart in a certain subject or field, but you finally find out that you have acquired a certain grade, just be happy about it because that's the best you could have done. However, if you find out that you have tried all means possible, you have done adequate consultation with subject teachers and other professionals on how to improve your performance, you have implemented their advice and yet you still score and a satisfactory score or result, that might mean that that's an indicator to show that you are pursuing a wrong course or a study and therefore you need to consult a professional counselor so that you can be assisted to work on the way forward. In addition, if anyone criticizes you for what you have done, just listen to what they are saying, but don't allow what they have said to deter you from moving ahead towards your destiny. Always remember that anyone is free to say whatever they want to say about your actions or your performance, but it's your responsibility to choose what adds value to your life and ignore what is not important. Pillar number 21. Pillar number 21 is reflecting on your academics, reflecting on your academics. As a student, always spare some time out of your busy schedule, but not during the official class time to meditate about your life and your studies so that you can be able to know whether you're in the right path or not. During this time of meditation or reflection, go through your goals and the targets and find out whether you are on track or not. Think about how you have been conducting yourself in relation to your set target and see how you have fared. Then think about your strengths and weaknesses and finally make a decision on the way forward. Therefore, as a student always retreat to a lonely place, for example, at the end of each week, a month, or a term or a trimester, and spend some time reflecting on your character, your behavior, and other habits in relation to your intended goal. If you find out that there are some things that you never did as you would have wanted, accept that you made a mistake and make a decision on what you will do to avoid repeating the same mistake again. 
It is also good to be spending some minutes each day before you sleep to assess your day's conduct in relation to your timetable so that you can know whether you achieved that day's goals or not. During this time, think about your conduct, how you participated in the lessons, and whether you achieved your daily goal or not. If not, make a decision of how you will conduct yourself the following day in order to improve yourself. Never sleep any day without having briefly assessed your day and made a simple resolution on how to move ahead. In addition, before you sleep, find out what lessons you will have the following day, find out if you have done any assignments given, and then organize yourself for the day by ensuring that you put in place the requirements for the day in a manner that you just pick them up when the day starts. If you find out that there is something that you have not done and it will be required the following day, you can spend some minutes either before you sleep to put things in order, or you can just decide to wake up a little bit early the following day to finalize with the pending matter. However, in order to avoid interfering with your sleeping pattern or program, it's good to be doing some checks. Once you are through with the day's lessons concerning any assignments or activities given, so that you can do them immediately other than waiting till sleeping time only to realize that you have something pending such as assignments. Pillar number 22. Pillar number 22 is accepting yourself as a unique student. Accepting yourself as a unique student. As a student, always remember that you are a unique student with a unique background and the only thing that has brought you together with the other students is the course that you have joined or the uniform that you may be wearing. Therefore, always remember that even though you are all students in the same school or same class and may be taking the same course, you are all different in every aspect. For this reason, you should always remember that when you are joining this school or this institution or a course, you do not know who will become your classmates or your schoolmates. Therefore, you should just appreciate your classmates, classmates, or schoolmates, but never compare yourself with any one of them, either in terms of looks, behavior, dressing, or in any other way. Remember that you did not join this institution so that you would compare yourself with others, but you joined this school or course as an individual that was thirsty for good academic performance. Therefore, you should always learn to live within your means and be comfortable with what you have, how you look, as well as with your status. Don't look at how others are wearing, eating, or drinking, and then you decide to be like them. Always cut your coat according to your cloth and live within your income or within your means. Remember that you all came from different backgrounds and you never knew what kind of background your classmates come from. So, instead of feeling guilty or undermining yourself just because you don't have what someone else has, or you don't eat or drink what others are eating or drinking, just focus on academics. Otherwise, if you start comparing yourself with others and wanting to be like them, you will never be like them and you will not be able to perform well in your academics, and this will even lead to wastage in the resources that you or your parents or your guardians have invested in your studies. Therefore, train yourself to live within your means because once you complete or complete your studies and the past, you will be guaranteed of a good life that you are admiring now. Otherwise, if you waste your time admiring what others have and desiring to be like them, you will fail in achieving your current academic goals and then you will still continue admiring and desiring what others have as you languish in poverty even after you have completed your studies. Always remember that the reason as to why you are in school now is to work towards having a good future, and therefore you should concentrate now on what can enable you to have a good future, but not waste yourself now in pleasure, and then you need a painful future. Therefore, even if some students tell you that you are pathetically dressed, you are not eating good food, etc., don't bother with them or fight with them. Just continue with your life because even if you listen to them, you will not change anything. After all, no situation is permanent and you have joined this institution or course so that you can be able to improve your status. So when they speak to you negatively about how they feel you should look 
how they you should eat etc don't accept what they tell you to intimidate you but just inform them that that is the exact reason as to why you are in school after all if you and all what they want you to have maybe you would not be bother joining the school so just thank them for reminding you why you are in school and the reason as to why you should even concentrate more on your studies however if you personally and completely feel that you have a problem in terms of material needs and you feel that your situation might threaten your studies if nothing is done just share what you are passing through with your teachers or the teachers in charge of students welfare or even the guidance and the counseling personnel or the administration so that they can see how they can assist you pillar number 23 pillar number 23 is coping with academic challenges coping with academic challenges as a student you may also experience some challenges that may be beyond your control and that are about to affect your studies but you should never allow any one of them make you feel like it's stopping to pursue your dream because there is always some light at the end of the tunnel for example you might be sent home due to failure by your parents or guardians to pay school fees or you might get sick and be sent home to recover from there and other such unavoidable circumstances or situations if at any time in your academic journey you come across such situations don't allow them to discourage you and make you feel as if your dreams have been shattered what you should always do is to think positively because even if you are for example sent home for a certain duration that might not mean that all what will be tested will be what was taught while you are away and even if it was be the case you should always ensure that you are reading from wherever you are even if it's at home as long as you carry with you your course outlines similarly even if you get sick and been ridden that should not mean that you have failed but it just means that a time has come when you need to just rest from the hassles of life re-energize and then continue with the hassles of life therefore if you are sick just accept that the fact relax and wait to recover and then once you are back try to catch up with what the other students did while you are away this is therefore or this therefore means that if for whatever reason you miss a class or a school for a certain duration of time you should try to catch up with the rest once you are back which means that you should always do any assignments that the rest did when you are away make any notes that they made and any other activity that was done in your absence however you should not overwork your body while trying to catch up but you should do your level best and once you feel tired or worn out to relax so you should always do what you can to improve your life and your studies regardless of the problems you might experience in the journey whenever you experience an unexpected problem do your best to overcome it and always remember that the problems are stepping stones and the pillars that can propel you to greater heights so while pursuing your academic journey, let nothing stop you from excelling and always face the emanating challenges with courage, for by the end of the day, you will come out victorious. Only don't allow anything to discourage you and let nothing make you lose hope for a good future through academics. Play your part as God and others play their part to help you emerge as a victor. Pillar number 24. Pillar number 24 is caring for your body caring for your body always remember that your body is the vehicle that you will use to take you where you want academically for that reason always taking good care for it and don't allow the body's feelings override you till you forget what you came to do in school therefore always be very careful to only choose activities or actions that help you improve the status of your body such as doing exercises having adequate sleep eating balanced diet drinking adequate water and avoid yourself uh, engaging in activities that alter your normal functioning of the body such as taking drugs and substances in addition never allow your body feelings such as the urge to have sexual overall objective which is to study therefore always remember that sexual urges are biological but they can be provoked by either what you see or what you hear therefore always remember 
But whereas sexual feelings are biological, you should avoid provoking those feelings so that you can concentrate on your studies. Always avoid spending time privately with the opposite gender student and then these guys that you are advising because even if it was true that the intention of spending time privately was to, was to study, your sexual feelings may get aroused while together and you end up having sexual encounters which can threaten your objective of joining an institution of learning. This is because you might end up interrupting your education due to becoming a parent at an unexpected time, or you may also develop other sexually related problems and that can be a great risk to your education. Therefore, Due to the fact that you are in your current institution to pursue your studies, remember to prioritize your education first by being careful about where you go, what you do, who you are with, and what you eat. Never accept a divorce from strangers or from sources that have not been permitted by your institution because some might even contain substances that can make you lose control and fail to be sober, and then someone can take advantage of you. In addition, it is important that you always create a time to relax. Remember, and reading or being taught. So, other than attending classes, revising, and doing assignments, you also need time to relax. As you engage in relaxation activities, you will be effectively managing any stress emanating from your studies. Therefore, within your daily timetable, ensure that you have set some time aside for relaxation activities. If your institution has provision for co-curricular activities such as clubs, music, drama, athletics, games, debates, Christian union, and other similar activities, ensure that you participate in them and you act for at least one hour per day. Remember that your body is neither a robot nor a machine to work continuously without relaxing. Therefore, even the learning institution should ensure that within its daily program, every class or the whole school has timetabled for physical education activities regardless of the level of education. The greatest mistake that many students and the schools make is to put a lot of emphasis in the classwork and forget that a tired or stressed body cannot be able to successfully grasp academic content. Therefore, even as a student, ensure that you have included a lesson within your timetable for relaxation activity, even if the institution does not provide for it. In addition, always ensure that you have adequate time to sleep. Don't oversleep nor undersleep. If your institution has a specific sleeping and waking up time, remember to avoid by that program. However, if the time provided for by the institution is not adequate, depending on the age and the level of learners, it is always good for the students to negotiate about it with their administrators, but in a respectful manner. Therefore, regardless of your age, you should always remember that your body requires time to relax through sleeping, and thus you should avoid sitting overnight while standing. Your body will always inform you when it's time to sleep, and even if it doesn't, remember to sleep for at least by latest 11 p.m. and wake up early by at least 5 a.m. You should therefore always ensure that you sleep for at least six to eight hours per day as an adult learner or even for more time, possibly by 9 p.m., depending on your age. Never make it a habit to deny yourself adequate sleep because by so doing, your body may reach a certain time and collapse. Pillar number 25. Pillar number 25 is avoiding distractors during lessons. Avoiding distractors during lessons. As a student, you should always pay maximum attention to the teachers during the lessons by avoiding any distractors that may make you to lose concentration. For example, if you realize that a certain student's behavior is becoming distractive to your attention, you can always change your sitting position. However, if you have been assigned a specific sitting position in a class, you can always liaise with the teacher concerning the matter so that your sitting position can be changed or the student that distracts you can be assisted. In addition, it's good to avoid carrying other gadgets such as cell phones in class, and if you must do it, then it's important that you always put them in silent mode. Similarly, avoid always going out to receive calls or texting while the class is in progress. 
Therefore, in order to avoid such distractors emanating from the use of mobile phones, it's always going to always switch off that phone before entering a class or you just leave it in a hostel. It is also important to avoid spending time in social media such as Facebook, TikTok, etc. during lessons because they are real time wasters and they can definitely interfere with your concentration to what the teacher is saying. In fact, it's good to block them all together if they don't add any value to your studies. Only engage in them when gaining something for your current lesson, but not when the teacher is in class. Always remember that you should never allow your concentration level to be distracted during the lesson. This is because if your concentration moves to reading something in the phone or concentrating on what another student is doing, you won't be able to understand what the teacher is saying, and as a result, you will start deteriorating in your performance. So, while in class, always have only a single business, which is to concentrate on what is being taught by the teachers. It is also important to avoid sleeping in class during the lesson. For this to be possible, avoid eating heavily during lessons because if you have a lot of accumulated energy, sleep will be irresistible. Secondly, avoid eating foods or taking drinks that you know very well out of experience, that once you take them, chances are very high that your sleep or your concentration will be low. In addition, engage yourself in physical activities such as running from one room to another, running for news, running to the hostel, playing games, and such other activities that can act as channels of releasing excess energy that might contribute to your sleeping in a lesson. In addition, sleeping early can be very important for you because by sleeping early, you can be able to have adequate time for your body to relax and also avoid wearing heavy clothing when attending lessons because by doing so, you will be accumulating warmth within your body, therefore creating a very good environment for sleep. Pillar number 26. Pillar number 26 is attending all lessons without fail. Attending all lessons without fail. Always make sure to attend all your scheduled lessons as timetabled without fail. This is because lesson attenders contribute to your performance and its key requirement by the academic institution that you have joined. In fact, it's also normally a prerequisite for students to be registered for certain national examinations and those students that consistently fail to attend lessons to a certain percentage end up failing to meet the set course requirements and they thus fail in their final examinations regardless of what they score in their final exam in case they get registered for it. However, regardless of such requirements, it should be your duty as a student to attend every lesson because that's why you are in your current institution. Therefore, your individual attendance to lessons should be self-driven and you should never miss any lesson unless with the permission from the subject teacher whose lesson you have missed. This is because it's through the lesson that you are able to interact with your teacher and learn various issues in relation to your subject. In addition, even if it happens that you have already read what the teacher will be teaching, you should never miss a lesson with the reason that you know what will be taught or that you will read by your own. This is because your teacher has the knowledge, the skills, and the experience in the subject, and therefore, the approach that the teacher will use during the lesson and what the teacher will teach may be different from what you already expect. It is also important to note that failure to attend a teacher's lesson is a sign of disrespect to the teacher, and your failure to attend a lesson without prior permit from the teacher might destroy the teacher-student relationship, which may ultimately affect your student's performance. In fact, even if your teacher is not present or he or she reports late to class, you should always make it a habit to always report to the class on time. Once you are in that class, you can be taking advantage to revise your notes or even do an assignment in case the teacher delays from reporting to class or fails to come altogether. Therefore, there should never be any reason to fail to attend any lesson unless if you experience an unavoidable situation. 
And even if we experience something that may deter you from attending a lesson, always inform or alert the specific subject teacher on time so that he or she can be aware about it. Avoid ap apologizing for lessons not attended way after the lesson has already passed. It's important that you always have the contact of your teacher so that you can always alert him or her about your failure to attend his or her lesson, but do it before the time for the lesson. Pillar number 27. Pillar number 27 is taking assessments with athlete honesty. Taking assessments with athlete honesty. Always remember that the only way for you to be able to know of whether you are achieving your targets or whether you are in the right path towards attaining your set target and goals by the end of your course or as the learning continue is by being assessed. Therefore, whenever your teacher informs you that you'll be sitting for a cut or an exam or he or she gives you an assignment that you require to do as an individual, be happy and appreciate it because the teacher is giving you an opportunity to be able to measure your level of goal attainment and through it, you are able to know whether you're in the right track or not. Therefore, bearing in mind that this assessment is very important to you as an individual, always make sure that you do it in an honest and sincere manner so that you can get an actual grade that can inform you appropriately about your level of goal attainment. You should therefore never cheat in any assessment in any way such as by asking others for answers, copying, copying from books and other sources, or by using any other means. So, whenever you have an opportunity or whenever an opportunity arises for you to assess yourself or be assessed, don't use any shortcuts, but do or write what you know. In fact, the best way to be assessed so that you are able to effectively know whether you are properly prepared for your examinations and revision is by being given an impromptu assessment without being informed about it. This is because through such a method of continuous assessment, you are able to get a score or a grade that exactly reflects what you, are, what you already know. And therefore, when you get such a grade, you are able to know whether you are prepared for your academic journey or not, and thus you are able to make the necessary adjustments and the teacher is also able to make an appropriate decision. Therefore, even if you are not supervised or invigilated during an assessment, always be genuine with yourself so that you can benefit from the results gotten. So cheating in examinations or in any other form, in other form of assessments should always be avoided so that you can be able to successfully go through your academic journey and become what you are supposed to become based on the genuine grade that you attain. Otherwise, if you cheat in examinations, you will never know what you are capable of becoming or doing, and you will also never be able to know your weaknesses and the areas you should work on to improve yourself academically. Similarly, the teachers can never identify your weaknesses so that they can assist you if you cheat and pass in an examination, and therefore, the grades gotten through cheating will always take you to the wrong courses, wrong higher level schools, and even wrong jobs. And whenever you are in the wrong job, wrong institution, or wrong career, you will never enjoy whatever you do, regardless of how much you are paid, because even your conscience will always crucify you. Therefore, never associate with any type of cheating and always be yourself. You should thus never fail to take any assessment as given by your teachers whether it's in the form of an assignment, homework, group work, project, continuous assessment test, quizzes, examinations, or any other form or type of assessment. This is because each of the assessment methods used by your teachers have certain objectives, and each objective is meant to make you a better student and enable you to complete your studies successfully. And by various examination bodies, that before a student is allowed to sit for the final examination, such a student should have passed in various continuous assessments and administered by the institution and such performance is graded as part of the coursework. Therefore, if a student fails to attempt any of those assessments, such a student does not even pass in the final examination because he or she will not have met the coursework requirements to allow him or her to be graded. It is for this reason that as a student, 
you should always strive to ensure that you partake every assessment administered by your teacher without a fail. And in case you fail due to any unavoidable circumstances, you should always liaise with your teacher for advice. So as a student, you should always know that assessments are very important for you as well as for the teachers. And therefore, you should never complain when your teacher decides to administer any because there is always a reason for him or her doing it. In addition, always remember that time is normally of essence of assessment. You should therefore always ensure that you do those assignments as scheduled by your teachers. This is because if you fail to do so, that might affect a certain penalty that might um, um, influence or that might make the teacher or the institution to pass some penalty on you once. In the case you ever fail to take any assessment due to any reason, always make an urgent follow-up with your teacher so that he or she can advise you on what you can do in order to take that assessment. You should thus always accept the terms and the conditions for the retake as will be stipulated by your teachers as long as those terms are within the academic policy for the institution. Remember, that if you refuse or fail to redo or retake the assessment, you will be ultimately the victim of poor performance in your academics because you will be lacking coursework or a final grade. This should thus be always avoided in as much as possible because your overall goal as a student is to pass in your academics and graduate successfully. Therefore, be a good student always by preparing well for any assessments, adhering to regulations set for those assessments and attempting all of them without fail and without any excuses or blame games, unless with a valid or unavoidable reason. Pillar number 28. Pillar number 28 is being assertive at all times. Being assertive at all times. As a student aiming at excellent performance, train yourself to directly say no to what is not good to your academics and a plain yes to what is important to your academics and your life. Never fear to speak out your mind, but always do it in a respectful manner. Don't be a student that always follows and does whatever other students request, regardless of the effect that such an action might have in your academics. So, because you either accept or reject a request, so before you either accept or reject a request, Take some time and think about the consequences of accepting or rejecting such a request. Then, if you realize that by accepting that request, you will fail to meet your academic goal, don't be afraid to reject that request. But if you find out that by accepting the request, you'll be able to achieve your set academic goals without negatively affecting anyone, then accept that request. Otherwise, don't always behave like a flag that is swayed by the wind towards whichever direction that the wind blows to. In other words, always learn to think before acting and to think before talking. Then speak out your stand clearly without giving room for ambiguities or guesswork as to your stand on any matter. By being open and sincere on every request, everyone will be able to know your expected stand on every matter and everyone will respect your opinions. This will give the students an opportunity to know your likes and dislikes, and by so doing, they will not be disturbing you by making requests whose answers they will already be expecting from you, and this will give you an ample time to concentrate in your studies. It's usually very bad for you to do something that you could have avoided in advance if you refused it outrightly, and the such can seriously affect your concentration and your studies. Therefore, instead of living under regrets after acting, always speak out your mind directly and don't accept to do anything that can interfere with your studies just for the sake of making other students or people happy. So, never accept to do anything that your conscience has clearly refused. This means that you should not just be a student that follows others blindly as if they are carrying your brain with them or your life with them. Always remember that you came to school alone, you will be examined alone, and the grade or score that will attain at the end of the day will still be yours alone. Therefore, do everything within your scope to help you improve in your academics and despise anything that speaks to you otherwise. 
Never just do things or take certain actions blindly just because others are doing it or just because you fear them, but do it because it will add value to your academic life. Pillar number 29. Pillar number 29 is making use of academic language. Making use of academic language. In order for you to be able to succeed in academics, it's important that you make it a personal decision to always make use of the official language of communication, which is applicable to your subjects of study, regardless of whether your institution makes use of that language or not. This is because for you to be able to understand whatever that you are reading or be able to respond to questions appropriately in an exam, you need to have a clear understanding of the language used. However, if you don't practice to always make use of that language in your interactions with the rest of the students and the staff within the institution, you may not be able to improve in your skills in that language, and as a result, you will also not be able to express yourself effectively in the examinations or be able to understand whatever that you are reading in that language. Remember that if you consistently make use of a language that is not official or a language that will not be applicable in your examinations, then you may also not be able to express yourself in the examination, regardless of whether you know the answer to the question or not. Always remember that if your examiner does not understand what you have written or cannot comprehend whatever that you are trying to say, he or she will not be able to award you the grade that you deserve, even if your intended response was correct. And as a result, you might fail even if you are a bright student. Therefore, if your institution has a policy on the use of a certain language, ensure that you use that language consistently, regardless of whether you are being supervised or not, because it will be for your own good. In addition, even if it happens that this institution does not have a language policy, make it your responsibility to use the correct language because it will be for your own benefit. There is nothing that is as distressing as knowing the answer to a question, but you are unable to express it due to lack of ones. Pillar number 30. Pillar number 30 is choosing your friends wisely. Always remember that the type of people that surround you are a key determinant towards the achievement of your goals and your dreams. Therefore, if you surround yourself with the people that don't care about your dreams, they will not create for you a conducive environment to achieve your dreams. But if you surround yourself with the people that have an interest in your goals and that are also working towards achieving similar goals, you will be assured that they will create for you a conducive environment to excel in your goals. Therefore, always choose your close friends wisely. Always remember that in as much as you have several students within your class or your course, it's not all of them that can qualify to become your close friends. Always remember that a bad company ruins good morals, and therefore you should always associate with close friends that have similar goals and objectives as yours or have an interest in your success. If as a student you surround yourself with the students that have an interest in performing well in their academics, you will also be guaranteed that you will always be doing something related to your study and not wasting your time with unnecessary issues and activities. Always remember that you have joined this institution with the single key purpose being to excel in your studies. Therefore, avoid establishing relationships that may endanger your studies or become detrimental to your academic success. Therefore, discipline yourself to only partner with the students whose intention is to pass in the examinations and don't tolerate those that may be having other objectives or motives. In addition, if you are learning together with another student or students, remember to always conduct your studies in the authorized public places within the institution and not in private places, because the same students that you call your close friends might turn out to be your dream killers based on what they might do to you while in private. Therefore, Avoid accompanying students to private study environments that are not authorized by your institution as learning environments. Even while away from your institution, train yourself to carry out your personal studies from your home and avoid going to study in other places that are not public. And if you do, then ensure that you are doing so in an environment that is safe to your life.
It is thus important that you always watch out for those students and the friends that might be pretending to be interested in your studies only for them to have other ill motives. Pillar number that one. Pillar number that one is avoiding unfamiliar places and the free offers. Avoiding unfamiliar places and the free offers. As a student, you should always be very careful of the places that you visit, either alone or with your friends. If possible, never go to unfamiliar places or places you are not used to while alone or while with friends that you don't know much about. In fact, the best thing for you to do is to always avoid such places completely. Otherwise, by going Always remember that as a student, it's your responsibility to always take care of yourself. And one of the best ways to do it is by avoiding and venturing. One of the best ways to do it is by avoiding and venturing to places that you don't know or going to places that seem to be dangerous to your life. One of the best indicators that the place you are about to visit or the place you are in is dangerous include the place looking to be deserted, the people within that environment looking strange, such as being dirty, possessing strange physique, dilapidated buildings, dirty environments, seeing very few people around or not seeing anybody at all, the people in that environment taking drugs or substances that you are not sure of, people gazing at you, among other such queer characteristics. In fact, even during the reporting days to institution or the closing days, always learn to go either straight to the institution or straight home because by so doing, you will be guaranteed of your safety. In addition, avoid accepting free offers or gifts while on my way to the institution or on my way home, such as accepting free offers or lifts from strangers. Don't also accept to drive, to drive home using private means, such as private vehicles whose owners you don't know or have no established relationships with the members of your family. In fact, it's advisable to avoid those private means completely, regardless of who is offering them because anyone can turn out against you while you are alone. It's therefore advisable that you make it a habit to use public means and don't accept to board any public vehicle or uh, that does not have any other travelers. So whatever you find that someone wants to offer you something, or whenever you find that someone wants to offer you something for free, and more so a person that you are not very close to or that you don't know, think twice before you accept such offers. Therefore, in every situation, always remind yourself that your current objective is to go through your studies successfully and thus nothing should deter you from achieving your dream. Let the caution always guide you and your footsteps. Pillar number 32. Pillar number 32 is being identifiable as a student wherever you are. Being identifiable as a student wherever you are. As a responsible student, always ensure that you can be easily identified as a student from wherever you are, whether around your institution or outside your institution. This is because whenever the members of the public or the institution recognize you as a student, they will always be ready to give you the assistance and the protection that you deserve in the case of any imminent danger. It's therefore important to always ensure that you walk around with your student identity card as well as your national identity card and any other documents 
that can be able to distinguish you from other people, such as the school badges. In fact, it's important that in addition to your national identification card or student card, you should always ensure that you also carry with you a pocket notebook that contains all the basic information about you, such as your official name as it appears in your national identity card, as well as your student card, your admission number, your school and its contacts, as well as your course and the class. In addition, ensure that you indicate in that pocket notebook your individual contact and the contacts of your parents or guardians, both the physical address and their telephone numbers. Also, ensure that you also include in that notebook any special issues that you like others to know about you in the case of an emergency, such as blood group, as well as any sicknesses and the medications that you might be taking. Thank you very much for learning about the other two key pillars of excellence in your academic journey. It's my hope that you will be able to apply each one of them to the letter so that you can not only complete your studies successfully, but you can also graduate with a level of performance that you will be proud of for the rest of your life. I therefore wish you success in your academic journey from now henceforth. For additional information on what you can do to excel in your examinations, kindly search for my other YouTube channel, my other YouTube video by the title Excelling in Examinations that is already posted in YouTube. My name is Meme GM and I'm a life coach, a motivational speaker, and a trainer. I run two YouTube channels from which you can be able to access my various videos addressing various issues by the following names. Number one, MLE Swap Enterprises International, through which I offer life skills, motivational and inspirational services. And number two, MLE Swap ICT, through which I offer ICT services. You can therefore search for these two channels, MLE Swap Enterprises International and MLE Swap ICT from YouTube. Then click on the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you can be able to receive current updates once posted. For additional correspondence, you can always write to me through the email mleswap at gmail.com. Be blessed and have a wonderful, successful, and prosperous academic journey. Be blessed. <laughs>